and you're getting traffic to your website, but you're not getting any sales from that traffic? One of my clients in the Shopping Carly platform called me and asked me a question. He asked, how come I'm getting quite a bit of traffic, but I'm getting very little sales on my website? When I looked at his website, from a basic marketing perspective, there was nothing wrong with it. He had products, he had link exchanges, his website was aged, and from Google Analytics, he was actually getting the traffic. So I had to dig deep down to the very fine details of his website to try to figure out what's wrong. Let's go ahead and see what I found. So this is the website, Modified Expedition. It targets expedition enthusiasts. Looks nice and simple, has all the products. First thing I advise my client to do is to run the price control slash price spy feature on all of his products. For those of you who don't know what that is, on Shopping Cart Elite website, if you go under features, price spying, there's two videos here to show you what exactly this tool does. If I click on the screenshot here, you basically select a product and you click search and what it does, it searches all the part numbers within the product on the search engine and finds everyone who sells that particular product and at what price then it tells you what's the lowest price, the highest price and what your price is and then you can run the price control feature to adjust your price to be the lowest or below the lowest competitor. So this is the first thing you always want to run to make sure that your prices are competitive on your website. And on his particular website they were not competitive. After he ran the tool they were. The second thing that I asked my client was how did he come up with this particular list of products on his homepage? And he told me that he randomly picked those products, which is a mistake. What you should do is you should research what products are in demand for your particular market and list only those products, try to optimize those products and get the best prices for those particular products. So how do we find out what those are? We can go to a website called Car Domain, and this is an enthusiast automotive social networking website. We're going to select Ford Expedition. There's 1,534 members listing their vehicles. And if we click on any one of them, we'll get an idea of who the members are and what kind of accessories they put on their vehicle. So here we see that they have rims, projector, headlights, audio. If we scroll to some other ones, we'll see a trend that most of the enthusiasts who have these kind of cars, they always get rims, which is probably the first product you want to target. And then they always go for audio and projector headlights and so on, but rims seems to be like the first thing they get. They also, on the left-hand side here, as you can see, they actually list what products they installed on their vehicle so that can give you an idea of what you should be offering so other expedition enthusiasts can purchase from you. Another tool that you can use is called Terapeak. And what this is, is it's an eBay research tool which allows you to find top seller items throughout the whole eBay within a certain period of time just by typing in a keyword. So in this case, I'm going to go to Terapeak.com, top seller. I'm going to type in expedition. And I'm going to say, give me everything that was sold in the past 30 days. So what we see here is we see a few top sellers. If we click on them, it shows 55 items listed, 28 items sold. If we scroll down, we'll see what these items are. We can see that this is a air suspension, uh, springs, and so on. So that might be a, a good product to offer. Another uh, seller on eBay we click on his link, 48 items listed, 7 sold. We see these are all rims. And uh, if we go to another seller, X3 Racing, 177 items listed, 55 sold. These are all taillights and headlights. And notice that they're all the same. So they keep purchasing the same item over and over again every 30 days. So this is definitely something you want to consider when evaluating what kind of products you are listing on your website and make sure that your prices are competitive so you can even contact the sellers from eBay and try to get the same products from eBay onto your website so you can have 
a good variety of products that people actually buy. The third thing that I recommended to my client was to optimize the products that he was already selling. So for example, if we click on this particular item, which is the first featured item on his list, we see a very basic small photo of these taillights. We see a very brief sales description, no bullet points, no technical specification. It doesn't say what kind of bulbs it is, where it's made, how it's made, if there's any warranty, who the manufacturer is, and so on. So these are very important key aspects about your product, especially if you're selling it so cheap. You want to give confidence to your customers that they're buying quality products. And all the products that are on the website don't have enough technical specifications. So you want to contact your distributor or your supplier and get as much technical data as you can for all the products that you sell and optimize them. Also add the sales copy, add the bullet points. You need to make each product page a piece of art so when your customer actually comes to it and they are considering to buy the product, they won't question it at all. So this is what you need to do for optimizing your product page. And the fourth thing that I recommended to the client is to reconsider a redesign of their website. Now the website is fine according to me and him. However, the customers who own an expedition, it might not be fine. Everybody has a certain perspective of where they would like to shop. In, in a real life example, let's say that there is a new store that opened up in your neighborhood and that particular store offers clothing that's your style, except it's going to be cheaper by 50% than from the store you usually shop at. If you go to that store, the prices may be cheap, but let's say you come in and it's just a disaster. The clothing is on the floor. The whole store looks like a mess. Nobody's helping you. Everybody's running around, throwing clothes around, and so on. You're not going to want to be in that kind of environment. You're going to come in and you might browse a little bit, see if they have anything on sale and so on, but then you're going to leave. You're probably not going to keep coming back there. You're probably not going to recommend anybody there because it's not your type of environment. A website is the same thing. When a customer comes to your website, they expect a certain theme, a certain perspective of your website. They want to feel like you understand them and you can relate that information by having a design to match their perspective of what they think you should have on your store. So you want to make your customer feel like they belong on the website. You want them to feel good about your website and you want them to keep coming back, which means that instead of having a plain design like this, you might want to have something shiny, something with chrome, something with exotic colors, maybe even a darker theme. And most importantly, you want to have appealing graphics of what the customer would expect to see on a website that they would like to buy from. So this takes a lot of work and a lot of creativity. So I don't recommend that you design it yourself. If you want to have your store redesigned, you should get a designer to do the research on what kind of theme your customer would appreciate from your store. And then they have to have both technical skills and creativity in order to execute the combination of the three. So before you consider a redesign, do the price control, get the products that the customers want to buy from your store, optimize the content. And once you're complete with those three tasks, then consider a redesign. Now, redesign is a whole separate subject, and I go over that subject in another video called Can Redesign Help Your Website Conversions? So before you get to the redesign portion, I encourage you to watch that video and then consider a redesign for your website.